Hello students, welcome once again to KMS Try. If you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe and share. If you have any comment to leave it in the comment section below. In this video, we want to try and summarize whatever we have learned in galvanic or voltaic cell. And we want to do that by considering a past question. This is the question. Let's read through the question and see what to do when we are given such a question. An electrochemical cell was constructed using zinc in zinc sulfate solution in a half cell and nickel in nickel sulfate solution in another half cell. A. Sketch and label the diagram of the cell. B. State the direction of flow of electrons in the diagram. C. State the polarity of each electrode. D. Write the half reactions occurring at the electrodes and hence the overall reaction. E. Determine the voltage of the cell. And we have been giving this information to help us to calculate the voltage of the cell. So when we are given such a question, what do we do? We first have to identify what we have. We have zinc electrode and zinc sulfate solution. Then we have nickel in nickel sulfate solution. So we have the zinc couple and the nickel couple. These are what we have. But if nickel and zinc meet, which one is going to lose electrons? Which one is going to gain electrons? Which one is going to serve as the anode? Which one is going to serve as the cathode? That is the question we have to ask ourselves. Remember, we said to identify that we have two ways. One, by using the electrochemical series. And from the electrochemical series, Linda, please stop calling me a zombie. Zombie is for zinc. Instead, now, now is for nickel. So from the electrochemical series, it is evident that zinc is above nickel, which means automatically zinc will have to lose electrons. Nickel will have to stay there and not lose any electrons. So in this setup, the zinc is going to act as the site of oxidation. And the site of oxidation we know to be called the anode. Then nickel is going to serve as the site of reduction. And that one too, we call that part the cathode. That is one way. Another way to identify which of the half cells is going to be the anode and which one is going to be the cathode is by looking at the standard electrode potential values at the tail end of the question. If you look at the values, you realize that zinc couple has a standard reduction potential value of negative 0.76 volts and nickel has negative 0.25 volts. We said the more positive one becomes the site of reduction and the less positive one becomes the site of oxidation. When we consider these two values, we realize that negative 0.25 is less negative or we can say it is more positive. So since it is more positive than negative 0.76, this one is going to serve as our cathode, the site of reduction. And since the zinc half cell has a more negative standard reduction potential value, it will be called our anode. So two things, we can memorize the 
electrochemical series which would help us to identify which of the half cells is going to serve as the cathode and which one is going to serve as the anode. The one above the other, the one above becomes the anode, the site of oxidation, and the one beneath becomes the cathode, the site of reduction. Or we can look at the standard reduction potential values. The one which is more positive or less negative becomes our cathode, our site of reduction. And the one which is more negative or less positive becomes our site of oxidation, also known as the anode. So from the values over here, it is clear that nickel will serve as our cathode and our zinc will serve as our anode. Or we could have used the electrochemical series. With that said, let's start by sketching the cell. So we have our beaker. Then we have another beaker. We are going to place our electrode here. Then another electrode there. This becomes our anode. And from our analysis, our anode is going to be the zinc half cell. Eh? So this is going to be zinc. Zinc. And it has been immersed in a solution of zinc sulfate. The question it didn't state the concentration, huh? but since we are dealing with standard electrode potential values, we know it occurs at standard temperature and pressure. And the concentration of the electrolyte must become one mole per decimeter cube. That is why I'm writing one molar over here. This one becomes our nickel electrode in our one molar nickel sulfate solution. Well, we could have written this one as one molar Zn2 plus solution. That one too is right. And we could have written this one too as one molar Ni2 plus solution. That one too is still correct. Because we said an electrode is a piece of metal placed in a solution of its own ions. So zinc in its own ions, nickel in its own ions. So we can write the full name of the solution or we can represent it by the what? The ions of that electrode. Then we would need our salt bridge to connect those two compartments to each other. So we call this one our salt bridge. Then we will need our wire. Connecting the two electrodes together. So this is our wire. Then this becomes our voltmeter, which will measure the overall EMF of the galvanic cell. So let's try and indicate that there's a solution here. Well, we have a well label diagram, eh? Uh -huh. So sketch and label the diagram of the cell. This is the diagram of the cell. So A is done. B, state the direction of flow of electrons in the diagram. So you're supposed to indicate where the electrons are moving from and where the electrons are moving to in a diagram. So the electrons are moving from the anode to the cathode, right? So let's, I, I write the names here, eh, beneath them. Anode, the next one is the cathode. And what is the polarity of anode? Anode is supposed to be negative and the cathode 
positive. So electrons flow from zinc to nickel. So we indicate that we're using an arrow. Then you write small letter E with a minus on top. That represents an electron here. Eh? So you are telling me that from the arrow, the electrons are moving from the zinc. Then you bring another arrow here to show that electrons move from the zinc electrode into the nickel half cell. Electrons move from the zinc electrode to the nickel half cell. That is how you indicate the direction of electro electron flow in the diagram. Uh, let's look at the C part of the question. State the polarity of each electrode. So, I didn't say you're supposed to state that one in the diagram, eh? but we've done that in the diagram. So, we are going to write C. Zinc electrode also known as our anode is negative then our nickel electrode which is called our cathode becomes a positive electrode so polarity the poles the poles are either positive or the negative pole and we've learned that the anode in a galvanic cell is the negative electrode and the cathode is the positive electrode. So C part of the question, this is what you just do for your cool marks. Then we move on to D. D. Write the half reactions occurring at the electrodes and hence the overall reaction. That is what D is asking of us. Remember, when we talked about the galvanic cell, we said that when the cell is set up and the two compartments are connected, there's a struggle about who loses electrons. But the anode will eventually have to lose electrons. And this is zinc. At the anode, zinc metal will lose two electrons to form zinc ion in solution so you realize that this zinc metal will begin to reduce over time huh? uh -huh. let's put this equation more appropriately huh? so we have zinc That becomes our reaction at the anode. Then at the cathode, we have nickel ions in solution. When the two electrons are lost from the zinc electrode, they move into the, uh, the nickel compartment. But nickel is already a metal and the components are atoms. They don't need the electrons. So they will pass the electrons to the nickel ions in the solution. So the nickel ions in the solution will then come for those two electrons lost by zinc then also form nickel metal. And the metal could either attach itself to the nickel strip over here or settle at the bottom of the beaker. So this becomes the reaction at the anode. This becomes the reaction at the cathode. Then we are being asked to write the overall reaction. The overall reaction is the sum of the anodic reaction and the cathodic reaction. Over here, the number of electrons are the same, so we can easily add the two half equations together. When we add them together, we are going to get zinc solid plus nickel ion plus two electrons to produce zinc ions plus two electrons plus nickel solid. So the two electrons are going to cancel out because they are found on both sides of the equation. Then our overall reaction, our overall reaction becomes 
zinc metal plus nickel ions in solution going to produce zinc ions in solution then nickel metal so that becomes the overall reaction so we'll be giving marks for the reaction at the anode marks for the reaction at the cathode they will be giving marks for the overall reaction over here too they are going to mark the polarity of the anode and the polarity of the cathode for us so you see when this question comes it might, sound, it, might, it might look so difficult to approach, but the moment you start solving it, if you know what you are doing, it becomes one of the easiest questions you can get in WASI. Let's move on to the E part of the question. And the E part of the question is asking us to determine the voltage of the cell. The voltage of the cell. Now we've identified the zinc part of the total galvanic cell as our anode then our nickel part as our cathode so remember the emf of the whole cell will be given as the standard reduction potential of the cathode minus the standard reduction potential of the anode cool job huh let's solve it so e the EMF of the cell is equal to the standard reduction potential of the cathode minus the standard reduction potential of the anode. Our cathode, our cathode, as if identified, is a nickel compartment, so negative 0 0.25 minus our anode zinc negative 0 0.76 so we get negative 0 0.25 plus 0 0.76 then that give us positive 0 0.51 volts so the question might sound or might look difficult on the onset because it looks more involving. But when you try it, trust me, it is one of the easiest questions to solve during WASI. I hope when you meet a question like this, you would be able to answer it. Please, go to the past questions. We have about three different questions of this nature inside there. Go and try your hands on them. And let me see if you have been able to solve them in the comment section below. Thank you.